Hi, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion with Lagrange multipliers and why we really like them when we're trying to use to find a maximum minimum, an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum. Here we're given this problem. We have an ellipse. Inside that ellipse we are trying to find the, the rectangle that would give us the maximum area. So from pre-cal, we're going to go ahead and write out what we're trying to maximize, and that's the area. And I can write this as an equation, a of x, y. Now, we know the area is length times width, or base times height. The height is going to become 2 times y. We saw that in video 1. Basically, we have y units on top, y units on bottom. The base, whoops, the base we can say is 2 times x, because we have x units to the right, x units to the left. So I can simplify my area by saying 4x times y. Next, we're going to look at the constraints. Now, the constraint they tell me, what's going to constrain our rectangle is the ellipse. We can't get outside the ellipse. So that's my constraint. And that's the equation x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 equal to 1. Now, I'm going to write this as an alternate function, g of x, y. And to do that, I'm just going to bring the 1 over. x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 minus 1. And now we can start applying Lagrange's method. So let's talk, remember, or review a little bit about what Lagrange was saying. He's saying, here's my constraint. I don't know what rectangle this is. My constraint, that's fixed. But my area function, that could be anything. And this just so happens to be a rational function. So in other words, it has all of these different possible level curves. And what we're looking for is the one level curve, or the one curve on that area function that is tangent to our ellipse. And the reason we want that is because at that point, they are parallel. They are going in the same direction. In other words, their gradients are the same. Now, some people argue, but okay, I can see this going down, but won't these be going up? Well, we'll talk about that in just a second. But what Lagrange is really saying, remember, is that they are heading in the same direction. Their gradients will be the same. So we can say that the gradient of our area function will equal the gradient of our constraint function times some unknown constant, lambda. So let's go back to here. Remember, we said they have to be going the same direction. And some of you guys might have trouble, but couldn't this be going outside? Well, if I have, if one of my, if my gradient is going in this direction is positive, my gradient over here is going to be the same gradient, just negative. The lambda takes care of that. It absorbs the sign of, of our direction vector right there. Alright, so we have to find the gradients. So let's go ahead and find the gradient of the area. Oops, don't need that. So to find the gradient of the area, derivative with respect to x is just 4y. The derivative with respect to y is 4x. That's going to equal some unknown constant. That's that Lagrange multiplier times the gradient with respect of g. This becomes 2x over 9. And be careful, this becomes 2y over 16 or just y over 8. So now I can go ahead and write my system of equations. Remember, the system, we need, we need the partials with respect to x, set them equal, the partials with respect to y, set them to equal, and our constraint. The constraint is just because we're going to have three variables up here, we need another equation, and the constraint's just laying around. It's like, hey, we'll take you, kind of like me in gym class. All right, so I can set these all equal to each other. The first one says 4y will equal lambda times 2x over 9. The next one, 4x equals lambda times y over 8. And then my last, vari then my last system, part of my system, is my constraint. That's this x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 equal to 1. And now I have three variables, three, way three equations I have to solve this. And how you choose to solve it is dealer's choice for me. For the first one, I'm going to solve for lambda right here. And if I solve for lambda, that's going to give me 36y over 2x. Or 
18y over x. I can use this to now plug into my second equation. And that's going to give me 4x equals, okay, so 4x equals my lambda, which I'm saying is 18y over x times y over 8. Let me see here. That should be 18y over x, not over 8. Sorry about that. There we go. And if I simplify this, if we solve this, what we wind up with is 4x squared equals 9 over 4y squared. Or x squared equals 9 over 16y squared. Huh. So take a look. I have x squared. I can now plug that in. So what can we get? Well, I know what x squared is, so this could be 1 9th times x squared, which we said is 9 over 16y squared, plus y squared over 16 squared, up to 16, and that's going to equal 1. So what do we wind up with? Those 9's cancel. Oops, got my y squared there. Got my y squared. And what we wind up with is 2y squared over 16 equal to 1. Man, I put my y squared in the wrong spot there. You know what? I'm not going to erase it. There we go. My algebra was terrible today, but everything works out in the end. So when we solve it, we will get y squared equals, which they can become 8. So therefore, y would equal to plus or minus the square root of 8. And hmm, since y can't be negative, we're not going to let y be negative because we've got 2y, so we're just going to take the positive. So we'll let y equal the square root of 8. I can then solve for x by plugging in. So x is going to be 9 over 16 times y squared, which is 8. So that's going to be x squared, sorry, equals that. And that becomes, what does that become? 72 over 16. Therefore, we can solve for x, and we get 3 over the square root of 2. I'm just going to solve that real quickly for you. So, so we have x, and we have our y value. So let's see here. So we, so we have x equals 3 over root 2, y equals the square root of 8. If I want to find the area now, I can now find the area of the maximum one, which is going to be 4. Remember we said it's 4 times x. 3 over root 2 times the square root of 8. You can leave it like that, or if you reduce it, you're going to get 24 square units. And that would be the maximum area right there. All right, go on to video two and we'll take a look at another example. I will see you then.